Welcome to Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and uh, we are here on Sundays at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., Monday mornings at 1 a.m., Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m. for the special edition of Tell Me Your Story, where we are giving you new paradigms for a new world. We're giving you choices and knowledge of those choices to help make your dreams come true. We have uh, live streaming at those uh, broadcast times at richarddugan.com. We also have um, podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, Stitcher, Player FM, Blueberry, or actually I think it's Burberry, <laughs> iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, and many other locations. And we're also on, uh, we're also on um, YouTube where you can listen to and uh, watch these interviews. So we hope you'll do that. We also hope you'll participate in the Decade of Perfect Vision, the 2020s, where uh, we ask you to go within, to spend time with, in that, uh, with that still small voice in that quiet, peaceful place. I hope that you will do that. We also hope that you can support us financially. If, uh, if you're able to do so, we would greatly appreciate any amount. We have a, uh, a PayPal account. It's for your security as well as ours. And uh, we hope that you will, we hope that you will uh, consider uh, supporting the work that we are doing and uh, give us uh, uh, what you can. I, I don't ask for anything more than uh, uh, what you can. We'll take energetic support as well. Let me pass that on to you as well. With that being said, our program today is going to focus on the acts of power. It is uh, a 365-page book, but it's because it's a daily teaching for inspired living. My guest is the author, the compiler, if you will, because of some of her works, and her name is Lynn V. Andrews. Lynn, thank you so much for joining us here on the program. Well, thank you, Richard. It's lovely to be here. And, of course, you're coming to us all the way from uh, uh, Arizona, Cave Creek area, which is uh, northeast of the metropolitan Phoenix area. I've been there a number of times, and um, eh, there are times when I do miss the hometown, but it's just it's not what it was when I was growing up, and uh, that's the sad fact. But be that as it may, you have uh, been providing people with all kinds of great materials uh, to help them through uh, the the day to day, week to week, month to month, uh, wh- you are a. Um, am I correct to, by, to say that you are a medium, a an intuitive? Well, I guess that's part of what I do. I am a I am a shaman, which doesn't give you much information either. But I teach um, I teach shamanism. I've written 21 books on it, mm. and it is uh, you know a very ancient um, or uh, with the native tribes and nations all over the world. And I have studied the ancient and sacred power of woman, as we would call it, because we have no other word to describe it. But in acts of power, uh, which are daily teachings for your uh, life, it gives you just a page like March 1st uh, that you can turn to before you go running out uh, carry on your life. And it gives you a short quote, Agnes Whistling Elk and myself, from a book I wrote called Tree of Dreams. Uh, Do you want me to read this short paragraph? Please, please go ahead and do so. It's called Sister Stars. So you would turn to this page on March 1st before you go out the door. Don't you know I am looking into your eyes? You think no one is there, but I am here looking for you to see me. See me, Black Wolf in all of your beauty and your power. You must not give yourself away like this. In the emptiness of space, feel your sister stars around you. They are blessing you and keeping you from harm. And that's for March 1st, and it's called Sister Stars. You also have one that adjoins it for the next day, and I kind of like to look at some of these, titled, uh, What You Live 
how you live matters. Uh, and uh, certainly I don't have a problem with us reading that. But uh, what I find is is that um, I struggled for a period of a short period of time, fortunately, with that whole concept of uh, trying to figure out uh, not only if my life mattered, but along those same lines, if it had meaning. I mean, is, is, is it really relevant to, you know, what's going on? And uh, do I really have something <laughs> to contribute, you know? Uh, yeah. And I got through that because the alternative is to say that uh, uh, all of this that we are experiencing is an accident. And um, so it doesn't make any difference what I say or do. Uh, I could leave this interview right now, go out, rape, pillage, and plunder, and it wouldn't matter if this is all an accident, if, if this just kind of happened. But my logical brain tells me that doesn't make any sense that this is an accident. Uh, the question, though, that then comes up after that is, okay, if it's not an accident, what is it? Why are we here? What's the point of all of this? And we could go into the teachings, you know, that we hear in the great ancient wisdom teachings. But for some people, that, that just isn't enough. Um, we were actually watching a documentary, uh, kind of a pessimistic one, at least from my perspective. It had to do, uh -huh. uh, it was a documentary, I think, on Netflix, uh, uh, Before the Wrath. It was definitely uh, Christian philosophically based, talking about the rapture, you know, and the saints being caught up to meet uh -huh. the, the Lord in the air. Uh -huh. And then, of course, what is it called? The, what was it called be the before the before the wrath, like the wrath of God? And this has to wrath. do, yeah, W R A T H. And it has to do with um, you know God pouring out His wrath on the non-believers and so on and so on and so on. Anyway, uh. um. And then, of course, they say, you know, and of course, after we're caught up and, and then, you know, the saints are they're now going to be and the, we'll spend all of eternity bef at the foot of the Lord's feet. And my first thought was, are you kidding me? That's it. That is the end of the <laughs> road. Uh, if there's no meaning to life, that would imp uh, epitomize it right there, because that just that's like you. Ha I, I would rather come back here. And go through some of the lifetimes I've been through, uh, and again, that's no disrespect to the Lord. Our, you know, in that respect, in that regard, or anybody who believes in that way, it's just I, I don't know why anybody would think that that would be the be all and the end all of existence. So I'm curious. Yeah, it's a very strange thing. Yeah. It, it uh, you know, at least, at least. Um, that you're li you may as well enjoy your life that you're living. Yeah. Whether it means anything or not, mm -hmm. it means something to you. And you know, uh, Richard, for sure, that you started life in a state of consciousness or you lived half your life maybe in a certain state of consciousness and then you became more aware as things were going on. And the more awareness you had, uh, the more you began to realize that you're not on this path alone. Yeah. You're, you know, with sacred beings of light, whether you can see them or not, it doesn't really matter because you feel them. Yeah. yeah. And it's a beautiful life. I don't know why human beings have to turn things in to such a disaster, war, agony and pain and killing each other it's just wild yeah when you think of it we're at war or we aren't russia and so forth going on yeah um i mean why would you go into another country yeah i mean why i i i have to say that that when i first saw the pictures what i saw was the what looked like the local police department escorting uh the russian army into eastern uh, eastern Ukraine. Now I've been told that uh, the majority of these of eastern Ukraine is is uh, heavily Russian supported. But anyway, that's. Uh, but the thing that went through my mind when I heard and saw this happening was, why? This is the 21st century. We're still doing this stupid stuff. I, it's come on. Um, I'm curious from your perspective, your insights, um, in terms of 
of course, uh, acknowledging that uh, that even when we try to look forward into the future, uh, intuitively, everything is still in flux, right? So it's hard to really say how things are going to turn out. And we're not asking, I'm not asking for predictions from you here, uh, other than your insights, at least at this moment, as you and I are conversing here on this first day of March 2022, uh, what what comes to your mind as far as um, where where we're going? Well, <laughs> I look at um, all of this uh, kind of if you are a sacred being, say, uh, it does not matter what you do or where you live, and that goes for everyone that is alive, really. And all that matters is how you live. Because sacredness is part of balance. And if you can live in Los Angeles, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, uh, Paris, or London, etc., um, live there and maintain your balance and the purity of your spirit, you find that you can really live anywhere. And why is this important? It, it's important because you find not only where you live in balance, but what takes you and throws you off balance. Mm. It is so much easier to live in a protected monastery as a monk, say, in the Himalayas, and remain spiritually balanced. It is very difficult to have one foot in the physical manifestation of a chaotic city and to keep the other foot firmly implanted in the land of healthy spirit or God for whatever you see is the sacred. So it's one of the reasons that I began to work with native people that hadn't forgotten mm -hmm. that people can lose their souls, as they say. They lose the meaning for their life. and. Um, I don't think it has to have a bigger meaning. It just has to be that you realize that you have a very short life, whatever it is. You have the pleasures of being human. Yeah. I, I, uh, I basically put it this way, that uh, we're here for our, our existence, not only as individuals, but even as the human race in terms of the eternity of time, less than a puff of smoke. I mean, that is how I that's how I look at it. We're here for less than a puff of smoke. And uh, oh, that's beautiful. And, and about as and about as tenuous, too. <laughs> <laughs> do you yeah. do you find, uh, um, uh, Lynn, do you find that people don't seem to quite get the fact that everything is temporary? Everything is temporary, and that's part of the problem that we have is we're unwilling to accept that particular reality. Uh, and so we, um, we want things to be, I'll be honest with you, I, my perception is that there are a lot of people who are in the material world and very much involved, especially when you talk economics, they want things stagnant. I mean, they may say they want things to grow, but things don't just keep growing and growing and growing and growing because there has to be some die off, you know? Yeah, it's the truth. And, and I don't know quite why we worry about it. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. To understand it is really to live it. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're talking with... We're talking with Lynn Andrews. She's the author of her current release, Acts of Power. It's a daily teachings for inspired living here on the program that you are listening to is Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and uh, we're talking about the many works of our guest, Lynn Andrews, uh, Lynn V. Andrews. And uh, what are some of the other, how do I put this? Because uh, uh, I don't know how you feel about this uh other titles uh that that uh, other mm, descriptive words for the work that you do well i think uh <laughs> realize 
thought, ideas, and form energy come from, then you can set a dial inside your own emotions, your own wisdom, and live a life that's happy. You don't have to be in a state of flux and you can live a happy life. You just have to choose that. Mm -hmm. Find, I see, I'm a, I guess, a healer. I have people heal themselves. And 21 books about that subject. And it has to do basically with understanding just who you are. You're alive and you're vibrant. And there is energy created thoughts in your mind. And you have a way of perceiving things as truth, whatever that may be. And probably if you think it's truth, it becomes truth. And how, how do we go through this extraordinary experience? If you really think about it, look at what you are your ears, your eyes, the internal system inside your body. Look at what all that is. I mean, it's a miracle. Miracles in each of us. Mm -hmm. So what are we so worried about? I don't know. People, uh, you know, self-flagellation. And I remember I was driving into Santa Fe one day coming down from Taos. And there was this guy dragging a wooden cross down the highway. He was nude. He had a in his hand. He was dragging the cross, and the other hand he had a whip. And he was beating himself. I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. And it turned out that he was a penitente. And he was whatever he was doing paying for the sins of all of us, I guess. Hmm. Wonderment to me. I don't know. It, I, I would think if I were God and I'd given all of this humanity life and all the beautiful animals, that you'd respect that and accept it as a great gift. Well, you know, that's something that uh, we talk about a lot on this program is um, this aspect of um, uh, our lives uh, being rather miraculous. I mean, uh, I still don't know uh, all of the ins and outs of, um, uh, of this process of breathing, of the heart beating, the blood flowing. <laughs> it's like it's almost a perpetual motion machine. Except yeah. there is a starting point and then there's an ending point. So it's not quite, but it's pretty darn close. My father's 90. So his machine's been running for 90 years. That's, that's pretty perpetual for me. Um, that's incredible. But here's, here's one of the other things that I find interesting too, especially within Christendom. And I use the, the song Amazing Grace as my example of why I'm not I I know I don't like the uh, it's a beautiful tune I'm not thrilled with the words anymore uh -huh. that saved a wretch like me now I don't know if you're a parent you have kids I have a daughter uh-huh any grandkids grown. no you would do anything for your daughter right I mean if if she was in trouble oh, yeah. You would go out of your way, maybe even sacrificing yourself for your daughter's sake, right? Well, yes. oh yeah. How is that any different? And again, if we use the the Christian philosophical model, how is that any different than God the Father feeling the same way about those that He created from the beginning of time, from the beginning of humanity, not just from the cross? And so that means that we must have had some value in order for God the Father to do what he did by sending his son as a sacrifice to, quote unquote, save us. And mm -hmm. so I, I personally think we were precious before the sacrifice. And of course, I don't know how much more. I don't know how you can go beyond pricelessness um, after the sacrifice. 
But it's like, you know, and then, of course, there's that passage in the Old Testament about how the sins of the father are passed on to the sins of the son to seven generations. I believe we're pretty far past seven generations. Um, Adam's sin is not mine. Now, I also need to say this, too, uh, Lynn. What I share on this program, that's mine. That is for me. I put that on no one. I don't put it on you. I don't put it on our listeners. Uh, it's, it's mine. It's my perspective. It's what I've come to today. But at the same time, Lynn, I'd love your insights on this as well. Uh, my beliefs of yesterday are not my beliefs of today are not my beliefs of tomorrow because I'm still living and learning and growing and experiencing. Talk to us from your perspective, your experience, the people you've worked with and the books you've written about just how precious we are regardless of the philosophy we choose to adopt. Well, how precious we are. Um, I, I don't, I can say more than what I said before, that it is, it, it is how you live, I think, that matters such a great deal. Um, I, I think to don't ever let anyone else tell you who or what you should think or be in your life. I think that's something that you have to come to uh, on your own. And don't let other people interpret life for you. Their truth may be very different from yours. And then be. Hmm. Well, it's <clears throat> very, very uh, interesting how we have diminished ourselves in our own minds, right? It's, it's, that's, oh, yeah. We've done it. Not, God hasn't done it. Yeah. We've done it for ourselves. And how you express your power, yeah. help, you know, your personal power, it helps define your reality. Yeah. And your use of that power, your intellect, your vision, integrity, intent, defines your relationship with people and the world around you. When you assume power in a conscious way, you always balance it with love. If not for a person, then for animals or art or nature, so that your life becomes more successful and more harmonious and in respect. So you are... You are, in a sense, already home. Mm. But we just don't Sometimes recognize it, right? You don't realize it. Yeah. You don't realize what you have to lose it. One of the greatest things of my life on spirit is that you have uh, ordinary gifts, and so often we take them for granted. The mm. art of being able to take a deep breath we don't really know how that all integrates. And quite honestly, we don't know that the next breath that we want to take is even going to be there. We trust, I suppose, or we maybe we take it for granted. But who knows? I mean, you know, there have been people who, uh, matter of fact, um, Dear friend of ours, uh, living in our home back in 2000, uh, 2006, 2005, actually, uh, back oh in Phoenix, back in Phoenix, uh, uh -huh. he died of an aneurysm in our home. Now, granted, oh, they, no. they put him on life support for a few days until they released him. Um, but, you know, you, you honestly, I mean, who... Unless I am scanned for it, I'm not going to know that I have an, let's say, an aneurysm in my brain somewhere. My my former father-in-law had an aneurysm that they did diagnose decades ago, but there was nothing that they could do about it. And one day, the aneurysm burst. And uh, four months later, his wife, my former mother-in-law, uh, she joined him. She passed from a broken heart. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's just we just don't know how much time we have. And I, I put it that I don't know about you. Uh, uh, do I have a will? No. Uh, do I really need to do anything with the stuff that I'm going to be leaving behind? Not really. You know, um, if today. Was I think, Richard, 
Richard, I think you should write that down as a will because people will be so upset if you leave the planet. Ah. And you just kind of uh, make it easy for them. Okay. Then I will. Uh, I will. I, I will. I will sit down and start uh, to penning that uh, so that they can have that. Speaking of of wills, I received uh, a will from my parents, not realizing that the, as individuals, they provided us with two wills. You know, one for my father, oh, and one my. for my mother. It wasn't a collective will. It was an in- independent will. But they both read basically the same. I mean, it was nothing more than. My dad's name is on this one, this copy. My fa- mother's name is on this one. And I still remember, and I now can joke about it, but I still remember after reading the will fr- from beginning to end, uh, a few days later, I, I'm going, I wonder why they left me out, why, why I'm not really getting anything. You know, it's kind of weird. And I was going to call my sister, who I'm very close with, and say, you know, why, why do you think mom and dad left me out? I was going to call my mom and dad and ask them. And that still small voice I mentioned earlier in the program said, Uh go back and read the wills. And I did. And I found out I wasn't left out. I just misinterpreted what was being said. And it wasn't written in some cryptic language either. It was very clear. Uh But for some reason, my mind and emotions, and I guess maybe my upbringing and the fears that I carry with me, uh, my mind twisted it around and said, oh, you know, you're not really getting much of anything. But I'll put another element on top of that. I don't need anything else, Mom. My parents have already given me, in the 61 years I've been alive on this planet, they've given mm-hmm. me everything I could ever possibly want. The most important thing has been their love and their support. And I, I, I wonder how how can we get to that place where... Uh, uh, my mother has even shared when her mother passed away, my grandmother, there was mm-hmm. so much infighting within the family over my grandmother's stuff, you know? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Whereas my mom and dad, they don't want any of that. They've they've put it together. But we also were raised to be respectful, to have respect for one another, to operate in dignity, to treat people with kindness, mm-hmm. and so on and so on and so on your father do? What was his life's work? My father's life's work initially when he first started working was an appliance repairman in Coolidge, Arizona. Uh, Then uh, he moved into uh, printing. He actually learned how to uh, set offset type to print checks when they were still printing checks on a printer. With ink and the whole, those big. Uh, hey, that's not a bad idea. Maybe, maybe he can teach me how to do that. Oh, I, I remember <laughs> he going. He can meet me, go, go. me down in the cellar while I. <laughs> there you go. go. There you go. Well, he, <laughs> I, I still remember going to the print shop once and looking at all of the machines that were there, the offset printers and the roller printers. I guess that's what they were called. Oh, you do that. Oh, terribly yeah. tough. Well, well, believe it or not, there was a course in uh, my high school. Um, I, I joined an organization called VICA, Vocational Industrial Clubs of America. Uh, and um, in that class, we learned how to lay out offset type. And we'd have to get each of the letters. And you had to learn how to read not only upside down, but backwards. And that is not an easy thing to do. Amazing, amazing stuff. But that's what he and did. what was that supposed to give you? Well, it would then, uh, whether whether you were printing newspapers or checks or flyers or even a book for that matter. And, and that's what they had to do when initially when you were printing a book. I mean, you think about, the, for example, the Gutenberg Bible. I would ha- be hard-pressed to believe that they had uh, those big metal sheets that they would uh, uh, um, uh, use the chemicals and this and that and the other thing to be able to uh, put different colors of ink on the page. They, I'm sure, probably used, and of course, I've never seen a, a Gutenberg press, but I wouldn't be surprised if it had, all, you know, the, the lead uh, characters that you would put in a tray and line them up uh-huh. and all of that kind of stuff. And can you imagine how long that would have taken? My goodness. I imagine. Oh. That Gutenberg, that was the first real printed. Yeah. It Wasn't was. It? I mean, the, yeah, I yeah. think. 
Absolutely. Lynn Andrews is my guest here on the program. We're talking uh, about, of course, a lot of different things, but also the book that she has, Acts of Power, Daily Teachings for Inspired Living. And it came out in January of 2022, obviously, because this is for uh, this year. But you could use it for any other year, for that matter. Or are you planning on coming out with one every year? A new one? No, 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 no. This is... uh, (laughs) Oh, God, I hope not. (laughs) (laughs) This was a very hard book to write. It's not a story of all my other books are stories that teach you great things about consciousness, but they're stories. You know, I, uh, they go from <laughs> A to B. This book is about the salient teachings that I found everywhere in my books, and I rewrote them and put them in this book and so that they were really salient for the day and the time. Um, You know, I read this book myself. You know, I just scan it quickly at the beginning of the day so that it gives me another point of view from the mindset that I woke up with. Hmm. Well, from this this book, uh, I jumped to um, I Am at Peace and All is Well. This is actually on uh, the 26th of June. And that happens to be my day of entry into this world. Uh, The shamanism of the sisterhood of the shields is the shamanism of the sacred warriors, the spiritual warrior who knows that Mother Earth gives us life force, the lifeblood of our sacred body, and that the planets and animals, the plants and animals, the four-legged, fish, winged ones, give us nourishment, and healing both in the physical realm and in the realm of spirit as we ride the wind horse of our sacred intent into the world of harmony and light. As spiritual warriors, we do do commerce in the world with the integrity of our own life and spirit. Our weapons are the shields of awareness, personal integrity, and the symbols of ancient truth and sacred giveaway. And that's from Coming Full Circle, one of the, you just say, I want to say 26 books? Uh, 21. 21 books. Be, uh, Blackjack. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, beautiful stuff. The page, where was the page you were reading? It was June 26th. And that would have been that all as well. Yeah, page. Uh, bah, 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 I can't even read the page number. There it is. 90, oh, 195. God, those are tiny. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I pull out my magnifying glass. Uh, this is some great they stuff, though. That. This is some great stuff. Um, and we certainly hope that folks will pick up a copy of the book. Go to your website as well. A matter of fact, uh, where are we going to send folks so that they can find out more about you? The work that you're doing, the 21 overall 21 books that are available to them, and even some of the coursework. You've got some a fascinating, uh, I believe it's, uh, is it sacred or ancient wisdom or mystery school uh, classes that people can take? I mean, you've got a plethora do. of great tools made available to the public. I really, really do, because I, I wanted to be able to gift people with something that they first of all, could afford, right. and second of all, could in, really enjoy and share it with other people if they wished or be very much alone if they wish. Um, so I do have the shamanic mystery school or just mystery school, and there's a two-year program and a four-year. Okay. If you sign up for that, uh, you get to begin with you talk with me you have a mentor in the school that kind of helps you along if you um, and we meet once or twice uh, during the year and uh, it's an extraordinary um, of learning there's nothing like it I'm not I 
am tooting my own horn, but it really is quite something. Hmm. Well, Lynn, you, Lynn, you cannot go ahead. You can't come out of the mystery school without a whole new, uh, really positive outlook hmm. on life. Lynn Andrews is my guest. This is Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and it's really a pleasure to have Lynn with us here on the program, not only talking about uh, acts of power, uh, because um, one of the things that I find so interesting, uh, Lynn, is the fact that that um, people do not realize how much power words have, uh, you know, and and people just say stuff. They will then excuse it away. I've had this happen to me where I would be a little upset about what a particular uh, candidate for an office would say. And I say, don't they understand that th those words have power to which I would ha hear? Oh, Richard, you're just you're being naive. It's politics. What is the big deal? And I say the big deal is that the words they are using have power. They have intent. They're trying to get into this office to convince the public, the voters, that they deserve this office and that the voters should vote for them. And so That's they're, really true. And they're using and those so words. True. Yeah. Well, you know, in the beginning was the word. Right. Right. Was the word. And that has great meaning. Words are powerful. When you write something, for heaven's sake, write it with consciousness. Yeah. Don't just throw things out there because, it, first of all, it will come back at you. And second of all, you're not doing anybody a favor. And so be careful of what you say and how you say it. And that's where my teachings come in. Mm -hmm. I looked out at the world. When I, all of this happened to me with the med, uh, medicine woman and all that, and I thought I was living in Beverly Hills. My husband was making movies. I had a daughter. And, oh, my God, you know, my life was challenged by this uh, wisdom that I was being gifted to me and uh, the experiences. And so I started writing about it. Uh, as a story, so that people could kind of go along with me up to the north of Canada and down, you know, to the Yucatan, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. and all over the world, finally, mm. working with uh, women of power and people who are extraordinary in this world that you never hear about. Yeah. When, when did you decide to study, and then become a shaman? Richard, to be honest, I could always see lights around people. When I was six years old, I realized uh, I was living uh, in a rural area with my parents, and I would ride to school on my horse. And I rode to school on my horse with Beverly, who was a Native American, and she'd come over with her horse, her pony, and we'd ride off together to school, which was about two blocks away. And uh, one day she came up, and I could see around her this red aura, and I, I knew that it her, her uh, consciousness that she'd been really, really hurt. And her father was an alcoholic. He was pretty well known as an abusive guy. And I said, oh, honey, or whatever you say when you're six years old, I, you know, gee, I, I hope you're okay. And she was extremely upset that I could see that. She was terribly, <laughs> terribly upset. Um, I could see her. She felt invaded somehow, I think. And uh, from that point on, I hid. I didn't tell anybody about this ability to see the pain in them, the harm. I could see their <clears throat> where they had cracked away from their authentic self, caused them terrible pain, and so forth. 
so I didn't uh, do anything with it till I met Agnes uh, Whistling Elk and Ruby Pontichis years later, a, a very unusual meeting. And they uh, really came for me. I didn't go to them, but I needed them and was looking in my heart and soul for them. Mm. And they came to me and I went into a position of study with them for the rest of my life, really. What is the one thing that keeps you searching and pursuing and looking for answers, not only for yourself, but also for others? Well, I'm interested in in your place of power. And uh, no matter what religion, no matter what nationality, uh, the greatest teachings that you can find always move you into a place of power within yourself. And do not take a placing power outside of yourself. So it's a big deal, actually. And truth is a reflection of the great spirit. So always living within your own heart. Somebody else's heart not somebody else's idea. So what do I do? I have these wonderful teachings that have, that I live by and, and have learned. And how do I share those without being a how-to book? So I said, you experience truth through the process of experience yourself. Mm -hmm. So I would take you on journeys in my books that you could find that truth inside me. Hmm. We're talking Does that with, makes any sense? Yes, we're talking with Lynn Andrews, author of Acts of Power. We certainly hope that you will also uh, go to her website. Uh, we're going to tell you just exactly where that is. It's lynnandrews.com, L-Y-N-N-A-N-D-R-E-W-S.com. And uh, we hope that you will uh, get a copy of her latest work, Acts of Power, as we continue here on Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and it's a pleasure to have uh, guests such as Lynn Andrews on the program. Lynn, I want to ask you also about, you have a, you have a monthly, uh, is it an actual radio program or is this a, a, a just internet, as they call it, internet radio uh, it's a regular radio program. It's on the uh, third day of every month. Yeah, the fourth. On, yeah, the uh, fourth fourth Thursday of every month. Uh huh. And tell us, I give uh, about this it's program. A, it's called it's called the Kindred Spirit mm -hmm. Radio Show, and uh, it's on HealthyLife.net. Mm hmm. The fourth Tuesday of every month at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Mm -hmm. And I welcome you all to come on. And Richard, it would be wonderful you ought to come on the show one day yourself. I would love to. Wonderful things to talk about and, and that are part of your life. Well, I'll and tell you. I'll, I'll tell you what. We'll set something up here for uh, for the next okay. in the next couple of months. All right. We'll well after the okay, after perfect. we're finished here, we'll have a little chat about that because I would love to do that. Um, it's uh, it's something that uh, it's it feels unusual to me <laughs> because uh <-huh. laughs> I'm usually I've been asking the questions for over forty years, and um, to then being be uh, being uh, asked the questions. When I go back and listen to the, some of those interviews, I, I actually have to marvel, and again, in a very humble way, at my ability to communicate uh, and the flow. Ju it's just there. I, uh, matter of fact, I still remember someone. Uh, matter of fact, I, I would love for you to address this. I remember someone was challenging me on, and this is these were their words, all of the mistakes that you have made, Richard. Uh, and at the time, I did not know where this came from, but I said to them, I haven't made a single mistake in my life. What I have had 
are life lessons slash learning experiences. And I have to tell you that what that opened up for me was the fact that if I took that position with every single, every single experience, it's a life lesson or, or a, 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 a lesson, you know, a learning lesson. Um, right. Then I don't have to forgive myself. There, where is there forgiveness if you're learning a lesson? Uh, it's again. It's like what? So did uh, did um, what? What the heck was his name? Who did the uh, the light bulb? But Edison. Did Edison seek forgiveness every time he his light bulb didn't work? Nine hundred and ninety times he would have had to forgive himself. <laughs> he was just learning, you know, ninety nine hundred and ninety ways that the light bulb didn't work. But there's no need right. for forgiveness there. So if we start taking that position that someone else is also having life lessons slash learning experiences. Where is there the need for, for that? Your, let me hear your thoughts on this. Uh, I, who knows? Maybe I'm way, way off, way off base here, Lynn. No, I think you're right. I mean, it, that's a very Christian, organized religion sort of viewpoint. And I understand that I went through all Catholic schools growing up. I'm not Catholic, but I went through that, and I understand it, and I respect it for whatever it is for the people who need it. Some people need that desperately, and that's wonderful that it's there for them. Mm -hmm. But I do not... Um, and the other thing, um, belief. I believe in this, and I believe in that. What you're doing when you say that is you're putting a fence around your consciousness. And I think that's a shame mm. because all things are possible. Yeah. And you know that as well as I do. And everything is, is magnificent and there's much darkness in the world as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. You open yourself to the learning of why these things happen and how do they apply to you. But I think the living every day is, I mean, it sounds so... Uh, well, it just doesn't sound very inspirational. But living every day to the fullest, enjoy it. If you just want to sit on the couch and watch the TV programs, don't feel guilty about not going out that day you know, or doing what you usually do. You know what I mean? We feel guilty about everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And women, uh, for some unknown reason in this life plan you know we kind of come in as one down and so it makes it a little different on our journey than a man has on the other hand uh it's difficult both sides of the water you know mm -hmm. we go up and we go down yeah and we go up again and then we go down. <laughs> yes, we go down again. And uh, it's funny because as I'm speaking to you, I remember all the years that I used to drive up over that pass mm. to get to the valley on the other side. Oh, God. Well, I will tell you that I remember the first time I drove up that, that pass uh, from the beach side. Uh, it was um, 2 a.m., Oh. On on a I, I don't even remember what day uh, the date was the ninth of May that's when we moved here we left Phoenix on the eighth and it took us twelve hours to get across the desert but it didn't feel like it uh, and I was driving up the one fifty four and the marine layer had rolled in and um, and all of that but we still found we found where we needed to be you know and uh, we've been here ever since and the universe. Just as it made a way for us to move here six to almost 16 years ago, the universe will make a way for us to move on to whatever the next part of this adventure will be. My challenge is getting folks to understand that I'm waiting for the universe to prepare a way and it hasn't yet. And well, maybe I, you're not supposed to go anywhere. Well, and that's entirely possible, too. 
um, you know. I see you there. I don't see you wandering off into the wilderness anytime soon. Well, I'm looking forward to doing some traveling for, from that standpoint, but I'd always come back to a home base, as it were. And, oh, yeah. And, um, and I've always wanted to be by the ocean. And uh, I'm guessing that that has something to do not only with past lives, but also due to the fact that the water within me, the 95 percent of who I what I am, uh, wants to be close to the 100 percent of the water that's on the planet. That being the oceans or close to 100 percent. So you have a view of the ocean, don't you? Uh, No, actually, we have a view of the valley to the north. But when we're coming down the hill, we see the ocean, we see the Channel Islands and so forth. And, and it's really very beautiful. There, by the way, there is one photograph I have been wanting to take ever since we moved here and ever since I saw what it looked like on the uh, winter solstice. I wanted to be at a particular lookout point taking a picture of the Channel Islands at precisely 12 noon where the sun was shimmering off of the ocean at that particular height, which was probably... You're going to take a shot in the dark, probably about 1,000 feet up. Our home where we live is 2,200 feet uh, up, elevation. Uh, and I've always wanted to get that picture. That just said Santa Barbara to me. Uh, but for some reason, every 21st, I'm nowhere, I'm nowhere near that opportunity. But I would like to ask you also in regards to um, our searching, our... Uh, Wanting to find our place in the universe. There are those who really do struggle. They are just beside themselves, okay, uh, with um, angst over the way things are in the world, the way things are here. It's somebody else's fault. We're playing victim again. Uh, You know, there's the epidemic, not the pandemic. But now we're headed towards, some say, a new pandemic, but it's mental health, oh. mental health pandemic. Uh, oh, God. I'm so tired of hearing all that stuff. Oh, Forgive me. I, I understand. <laughs> but my, my question to you in that regard is how it, what, what would you offer to us? Maybe some of those, some, and it's, I'm not one of them, at least I don't believe so, um, who are kind of feeling overwhelmed, uh, we're feeling a little anxious about what's going on in the world, about, you know, whether it's the pandemic, the government telling us to do this, that, and the other thing, uh, um, different groups and organizations saying, no, you don't have to do that, you're, you're a free constitutional person, you can do whatever you want, blah, blah, blah. Um, and and it, 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 people are just being pulled in so many different directions. What can you offer us uh, in terms of trying to minimize that pull? I just think give it no attention. Ah. Attention is energy. I mean, just skip over it like a, a rock in the road. You know, go around it and go on your way. Mm-hmm. If it, uh, you know, we, <laughs> if you see yourself truly as energy, um, you don't want to spend your energy on something that will block. Oh, you yeah. know. Yeah. That just stops you right there. Right. Oh, well, yeah. let me think about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know. And I'm sure there are millions of reasons, and I'm sure that is very uh, irreligious of me or whatever. But um, at this point in time, my God, there is so much to be grateful for, in particularly in this country. For heaven's sake, don't forget it. Yeah. No, please. Please don't. It's it's uh, it's something that that, you know, we've we're alive. We're breathing. Uh, you know, some of it. Yeah, we're able to go to work if that's what we want to do or school or what have you. Oh, you know what else, Richard? You're able to go to your bookcase and get the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Yeah. And get the teachings, ancient fabulous teachings yeah that you would have to have gone around the world trekking with a you know on a donkey to find you know on for all of your life hmm. to find books that you can pull out of your bookcase 
so we have a time when everything is possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anything is possible. You know, uh, it's it's only impossible if you don't do it. That's just my. Yeah, that's, that, that's a good way to put it. That's my two cents worth. <laughs> For what it's sure. worth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this to me is is it's fascinating. Um, I, I want to ask you about one of the other books that you've written uh, only because the title really intrigued me as well as the color of the book. It's green uh, and it's called uh, 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 I think it's coming full circle. Give us a give us a synopsis a synopsis of that book. The reason why the green st- stood out to me is because I've been told that that is the color that I need to uh, constantly surround myself with. Uh, and there was one other element to the green that I think is fascinating. If you have ever been in a room that was um, say highlighted by oh I, uh, red maybe or blue or uh-huh. yellow or what have you. Okay, or like a light, something bright with those colors. When you turn away from it, uh, at least I experienced this, you get this opposite color halo in your eyes, right? Uh huh. I've noticed that doesn't happen with green. I find that fascinating. It, it doesn't, oh, that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Anyway, uh, tell us a little bit about um, uh, the, the, the book uh, that is... Uh, um, uh- that is called a coming full circle. Uh, it's um, it's an interesting book. It was an interesting book to write. Uh, early in my work with my teachers in the Sisterhood of the Shields, I would find a way to honor the gifts that these women of such varied cultures had uh, bestowed on me. And how I could explain my ability to see light to people. How could I share the mysteries that I had experienced? So the more I looked for answers, uh, the more I talked with Agnes and Ruby or looked at the human condition and the meaning of life, I began to explore the lives and the teachings of the great ones, the religious people, the wise ones, Mm -hmm. writers and artists. Of, of many different beliefs, and I knew I was a writer or an author. I hoped that I could bring a new way of seeing to others that actually I had found. So I climbed into that vast expanse of the conscious and unconscious world, trying desperately to figure out a way to teach something that was abstract. Hmm. So in my first dreams of creating a school and writing books and being an author, um, I have written many books, each centered on a particular theme and different teaching. So one uh, could be the story of my experiences with my teachers and story that I write about contains a single thread of learning. And with this new book, uh, Coming Full Circle, I'm able to tie together the fibers, the strings of many stories and journeys to share the lessons that I have learned uh, with extraordinary women and these very different cultural experiences. Uh, They've empowered me in my struggle to manifest into words what I've learned and dreamed. So this book is really a wish or a gift to you. May you have your own dreams and awaken to your understanding. Hmm. So I take you on that journey with me in this book. I am uh, very, very happy to have featured this book, Acts of Power, Daily Teachings for Inspired Living, here on Tell Me Your Story. I'm Richard Dugan, your host, and we're talking with the author of Acts of Power, Lynn V. Andrews. LynnAndrews.com is the website, which we will be linked to, Lynn, so that people can find out more about you and obviously get a copy of any one or all 21 of your books. Then they'll have the Lynn Andrews Library. Uh, and we certainly, <laughs> And we certainly hope that people will do just that. 
Uh, every book that Lynn Andrews writes is a true celebration of life's wisdom and power. And Lynn's 365-day insights and inspired messages are so needed in today's unbalanced world. Each is a sacred reminder to walk our sacred path and on this earth with truth and full, make sure I get the word, potential. <laughs> That's a good one. Richard, I love you to pieces, but I've got to go. I just looked at the time. Oh, my. Well, oh my God. then let me, if I may, ask you the three final questions I ask all of my guests. They'll go very quickly. It's kind of like a game show. And uh, I thank you so much for giving us so much time here on the program. The first of the three is, uh, who is Lynn Andrews? Oh, my goodness. I've written 21 books about who I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And three words or less. I'm, uh, my goodness, and with great appreciation and gratefulness for the spirit and for life. What is for the truth of being? All right. And what is it that you hope to or want to achieve through the work that you are doing now? A sense of well-being. And finally, what is your life's purpose? Hmm. Well, the reflection of beauty and spirit and God, whoever, whatever, all of these things mean, uh, the reflections of light. I hope that I'm like a mirror hmm. to you and to anyone that I meet. Well, Lynn, I want to thank you again, Lynn Andrews, for joining us here on the program. I know we're uh, tight on time here, so I will just say to you, our listeners and viewers, thank you for listening to and viewing Tell Me Your Story, New Paradigms for a New World. Until our next broadcast, podcast, videocast, love to love.